You're listening to Tim Bolkley's Five Minute Bible. Headship. What did Paul really mean? You see, talking about headship for some Christians has become almost a doctrine. And insofar as it is, it's thoroughly based on Paul. There is little talk about men being the head of women elsewhere in the Bible. Paul uses head in two ways. He talks about man being head of woman, but he also talks about Christ being head of the church. And we need to ask what Paul means so that we can understand what he's getting at. Because head is picture language. Head teacher is not someone who teaches only heads. And a head gardener doesn't grow heads instead of plants. And picture language is cultural. If you're not American, baseball analogies will probably lose you. And if you are American, cricket analogies certainly will. Does heart mean thinking and willing, as it does in the Bible? Or does it mean the emotions? as it does in English today. Picture language is cultural and not universal. So what does Paul mean by the metaphor of head? Well first let's look at head kephale as a metaphor in Greek. Kephale is used about 2,300 times in the ancient Greek manuscripts. The meaning changes in the later period, probably influenced by the West. Only 49 of those uses are metaphorical. 49 out of 2,300. In other words, 2,250 of the 2,300 are not metaphorical. They just mean one of those things that stops your neck from fraying. And 12 of those 49 metaphorical uses are in the New Testament. Something odd is going on here and we need to explore it further. Paul talks about Christ as Kephale. Now we need to look at what Paul is talking about when he talks about Jesus. He often talks about Christ as Lord, Kurie and when he does he means that Christ is the boss. No problem. Occasionally he talks about Christ as head of the church. What does he mean then? It's quite interesting that he never uses head carefully of any worldly authority. Not once. But he does use head of Christ and the church. Why? What nuance was Paul intending by talking about head rather than Lord, boss? To get at this we need to look at how Paul does use carefully. There are two really interesting key texts for this. Colossians 2 verses 18 to 19 is one of them. Don't let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. Here, Christ as the head is the one who holds the whole body together, feeds it, and causes its growth. Nothing about ruling. Take a look at Ephesians chapter 4 verses 15 to 16. But speaking the truth in love we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth, building itself up in love. See? Same elements. Joined fed growth. For Paul it's quite clear from these two passages that when he talks about Christ as head of the church he's talking about Christ as the one who holds the whole church together in whom the church is united, joined, one, and as the one who feeds heads have mouths in case you hadn't noticed and in feeding builds up. Heads join together, feed and build up bodies just like tadpoles becoming frogs if you want to extend Paul's anatomical hints and that's the picture that Paul's using whether or not it's the picture we're used to head gardeners, head teachers, head charangs Paul when he says head means the one who joins together feeds and builds up no wonder in Ephesians he talks about Christ's sacrifice when he talks about Christ as head of the church Christ as head isn't boss, that's Lord. Christ is the boss, but it's not the focus of what Paul is saying when he talks about Christ as head of the church. Christ as head of the church joins the body together, provides unity, feeds, nourishes, and so builds up and causes growth. That's what it means to say that Christ is the kephale of the church. So what might it mean to say that the man is head of the woman? That the husband is head of the wife? It might mean that husbands are called to hold the family together, feed and equip, build up 
and cause the growth of the whole family and that might be what Paul is on about if there is a doctrine of headship in Paul and I'm not convinced there is then it's about the husband as the sacrificial servant of the family there's something to think about at least for us men bye for now <laughs>